I'm Ellie from NashvilleWife.com and I'm here with Keith Getty. He and his wife Kristen are world-renowned songwriters and musicians who have been labeled as modern hymn writers. They've orchestrated or produced music for more than 200 projects and their songs are sung by an estimated 100 million churchgoers each year. Their song, In Christ Alone, has been named one of the top five hymns of all times. Keith and Kristen have three daughters, and they split their time between Nashville and Northern Ireland. Keith, it's so good to be with you today. Good to be with you, Ellie. So to start, tell me how you got into music. Um, <clears throat> well, I grew up, um, like, like most church musicians, I grew up in a family which had music and which went to church. So I, my mom was a piano teacher, and my dad was an organist, and they got me into music. And at 10, I actually took up the classical guitar. And that really was the one that captured my imagination. Everything until then was a bit, yeah. And then once I, got, once I discovered the guitar, that was incredible. And then soon after that, began to use it in church, and that was a great outlet. And what was your first song that you wrote? Well, I wrote a bunch of songs in my, my teenage years, but I, I, I was such a classical musician, I tended actually to write more classical music. So um, there's a few people who helped me on the guitar write songs, but I never really liked them. Then I got into writing, writing church music, like Christmas music. Uh, my teenage years. Then, then after you, after college, it went very classical. Right after college, I was on a train one day and I wrote a song for a friend of mine who was who was actually C.S. Lewis's stepson, and it was a song inspired by Lewis. It's just on the train as we're traveling, and they they, they used that for their C.S. Lewis celebrations. And then in, at 25, I started to write hymns. And uh, the first one of those that was released was actually in Christ Alone. That was the first one. So. Okay, so you wrote that before you met your wife, or? No, I'd met Kristen by that stage, but she hadn't realized that, 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 that underneath all this excess weight and arrogance was a very attractive man. So it took her a while, actually, to reach that point. So you're both heavily involved in the music industry, and I think a lot of my readers are really interested in the idea of serving as a family, which I think you guys have figured out pretty well. Do you have any advice for couples who are looking for a way to serve with their families? Gosh, it's, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't ever presume to, to offer too many straight pieces of advice. I think what Kristen and I have learned is this, is just a few things. Number one, there are only actually two really major decisions you make in life. One is to choose Christ. Another one is if to marry, who to marry. Every other decision, like a career decision, like a house decision, like a, like a business decision, like a, like a, all, all these crossroads that you come to in life, you know, most of them are partially, you know, are, are they're not, they're not rarely black and white. They're usually one is better than the other, and sometimes you have to change direction. And sometimes life is just the way it is. But those two decisions are the most important things. So, if you are not married and you're considering marrying somebody, do you know that that is the most important decision you'll ever make? And that person has to hold the ultimately the character and integrity of that person has to be something that you want to grow old with, that your children and grandchildren should be their legacy to you. So I think that's, that's the main thing. Then after that, I would say, as a hymn writer, people are always asking what theologians or what books most inspire you. And I gotta say that the most important person, the person who has bigger, more pastoral influence on me than anyone else is my wife, because she really knows. I can, I can tell my pastor this is my motivation, and my wife knows it's really not my motivation. I can tell my pastor I'm being really bad at this. And my wife can go, yeah, you're being bad, but underneath it all, I know you want to please the Lord. And so there's a, there's a fundamental belief, but also an honesty that she, can, she knows what you're really thinking. And um, so, so the greatest thing I can do in a day um, as, as, as a spiritual discipline, other than praying, is praying with my wife. You know, the, the most important person I can speak to about any subject, from business that she only knows 3% about to... To, to major life decisions is my wife. So I think I, I, I struggle with, you know, I, I worry for a lot of young Christian leaders that I meet as we travel or young musicians who I meet who are, who are traveling a lot, who are busy, who are running in these circles and they're talking about a lot of things and leaving their wife in the dark quite a lot. And um, I, I struggle when I see guys who are being made alive by what they're doing and their wife looks curiously discontent or unhappy. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's the important thing is to treasure your marriage, you know, above above whatever opportunities, however big or small, life presents. And you guys have three little girls? That's right. That's right. The, the, the journey to having children was really hard for us. We, um, at one point, for a period of about three years, thought we might not be able to have children. So that was, I, I would say, of our marriage, that was the dark night of the soul in terms of the hardest. And we've, I'm very conscious that we've had many good things, and a lot of people have a lot harder marriages than we have. And so, uh, you know, I don't, I don't say that lightly, but certainly that was... That was a tough thing that 
that, that we went through and, and has made me very sympathetic with couples who, who struggle with that. But, um, but it, it made us make a lot of decisions and make us simplify a lot of things. Um, and then the Lord gave us these three wonderful, absolutely crazy Irish looking girls. <laughs> So how do you balance work life with your family life? Well, I think, I, I think there was a couple of things happened. About three years into wanting to have children, I had to make the decision to come off the road. I said, look, Kristen, we're going to come off the road indefinitely. We're going to do for sure for six, 12 months, but it may ultimately be indefinitely because this is, I have to show my wife that even if we can't have children, that this was more important to me than anything else. And so we did that. And, um, that was important. Then when we decided to come back onto the road, we, we created it with clear boundaries. So um, so we, we say 12 weeks a year is as much as we'll travel. My wife, I'm primarily a writer. My music, you know, there's a strong sense my music will be sung after my death, but nobody will be talking about my performances after my death or my business after my death. You know, that's not, so I'm primarily a writer and my wife is primarily a mother. So we, we, we keep our performing aspects to 12 weeks a year and lots of people lots of people here actually have told us we could achieve a lot more if we do more and they're probably right but that's that's just a boundary that we've had to create in life and and that uh, that helps us with our priorities and we've had to, as, uh, as you know we've had to sort of say uh, keep Kristen's time especially limited a week like this I've made myself available I've taken a week off writing which I can do my wife can take a week off mothering so I've taken a week off writing to focus all the kind of the administrative and relational parts of our work into this week because so many of our friends are here. My wife, I think, is going to do two days. So that's a, so, so that's a, it's constantly having to work it out. We've, we have a really unusual thing because we work together. We've actually never had a night apart. So we've been married 11 and a half years wow. and we've never, ever been a part of that. We've done almost a thousand flights between us. We've been, um, we've spent much of our marriage traveling, but we've never actually ended up being apart. So that, that's been really fun. And that's unique, of course, because of the uniqueness of our careers. Um, and it's just as a family, those kind of things have, have kept us, you know, you know, protected. Um, um, so yeah, I, I recommend people when you realize, for me, we, we might do it, now that we have children, we may have to change that, but I knew I was always easily distracted and wanting to do the next thing. So for me, that was the kind of thing that hemmed me in and I could still be inspired, but but it, it meant I didn't get carried away or, or just overly distracted all the time. So. And are you able to take your children with you on the road oh, sometimes? Yeah. No, they always, yeah, they always come with us. So, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's crazy school. When we, when we do the tours, they talk about the family bus and the fun bus and we're the family <laughs> bus. So, so it's my wife and I, the three girls, um, three nannies and an assistant. So we, we, so we have our bus, then the, the, the van, and the Christmas tour, then there's a third bus for the crew because the Christmas tour is much bigger production when it does the concert halls. So, so it's good. I mean, it's, it's not the cheapest way to do life. Um, you know, it, obviously it, there's sacrifice and there's cost to it. But I think nothing significant in life is achieved without sacrifice. You know, if, if we want to, whatever it is, whether it's spiritual, marriage, children, um, uh, creative career, whatever it is, um, indeed even our, our contributions to our local church, it, these things are not achieved without sacrifice. You have to work out and just, you know, talk it through and keep talking it through and you know, be flexible enough to change your mind when you realize the other person might have a point of view, but that kind of thing has helped us and those kind of things have helped us as we've gone through marriage. So. Have your daughters picked up an interest in music? Yeah, yeah, they're crazy. I sent you the picture of Eliza. So it's, um, she, um, they're, the girls, uh, they love to sing. They love to sing. Eliza's quite the performer. She's four and, um, and, she, and she loves getting on stage with her mom. There's a great video, you might be able to, you can locate it, I think our, our office can send you it, but there's a great video of my birthday this year when the show played. Um, up your part of the world, actually, it was just, it was just, uh, it was actually just over in Wisconsin, just, just, it was just a few quarters of an hour outside Illinois, and, uh, and, and Eliza came on stage on the Christmas show night and sang Happy Birthday. Uh -huh. So it was incredible. So, of course, she wanted to keep the microphone from her mom, so that was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool moment. So, um, so she loves it. Charlotte, Charlotte's two. They sing Grace every day together. Um, and Charlotte, Charlotte's beginning to learn in Christ alone, so she's doing okay. Gracie's just seven months, so she doesn't know anything yet. So. Now, you've been involved in a pretty diverse set of projects in your music career. Do you have a favorite project that you've worked on? Honestly, my favorite project is always the thing I'm currently on. I think, I think for all of us, whether it's our, our spiritual lives or our marriage or, or our, our professional work. 
if we're not most excited about the thing we're doing now, we have to ask questions. You know what I mean? So in other words, in my marriage, we should be discovering new things as a couple together. We should be praying about new things, having new conversations. In our, you know, in your spiritual life, we should be excited about something new in scripture, something new about God that we're learning, you know? And similarly in music, I feel the same thing. Obviously at the minute, last Sunday was the global sing of Facing a Task Unfinished. So we had a hundred countries all singing this hymn and trying to, trying to redirect um, what churches sing to, to mission and evangelism. For a whole generation now, the modern worship movement basically hasn't touched mission and evangelism. And as, as society around us continues to silence the Christian voice, I think we have to find ways to, to steal past the watchful dragons, as C.S. Lewis said, and, and, and encourage people with the need, the urgent need to tell others. So that's really exciting. And then we're now, um, after this week, I'm kind of in solitary confinement until the 8th of, of April, when we record the album live at Ocean Way. So, so that's, that's the whole of life right now, is, uh, professionally, is doing that. And to be able to have taken that hymn facing a task unfinished, to realize that the context was written against the backdrop in 1930s of 750,000 believers left in China and the Chinese government wanting to abolish them. And to realize today there's over 80 million Christians in China. It is the fastest growing um, uh, missionary movement in the history of the world is the Christian church in China. And so to, to realize that that was the church fighting against sort of a progressive government and media that wanted to silence the Christian voice and to realize that this is what happened. And so to be excited and inspired and challenged by that, you know, I'm, I'm just so excited about that. So, and then our, our first church music conference, of course, is next year in, in, in September 17th to 20th, 2017. So that's exciting. Um, Kristen is releasing, Kristen and I are releasing, but many through Kristen, uh, I think called Hymns for the Family next year, which is beginning to teach children their faith. And then the fourth thing we're working on is, is continuing to redevelop is this Christmas project we do. And a lot of people saw it was on PBS this year and continuing to develop that. So that's the four main projects that we're working on at the minute. So your album, Facing a Task Unfinished, comes out in June, is that correct? That's right, it comes out in June. We're doing a quick tour in June as well, around that time. Um, and, it's, and, it, and I guess it's a more global sound. The first album was, and Christ Alone album was more simple. Uh, it was a simpler sound. The, the, Awake in the Dawn was a band sound. The Irish Christmas was more Irish. And then Hymns for the Christian Life was an Irish bluegrass. This has kind of got almost like global influences as well. So it's a really, it's a really exciting project. And it both has that sense of live because we're inviting uh, an audience to be part of the Ocean Way Studios for the two nights here in Nashville. Um, but it also, it also is slightly more virtuosic, a little bit like the Christmas show. Um, you know, more more sort of instrumental interest stuff as well. So we're we're pretty excited about it. And how can people keep up with you all and all the projects? Gosh, well, I guess GettyMusic.com is the website, and on our Facebook, I think I, I'm not a Facebook guy, but I think it's Getty Music or Keith and Chris and Getty. But you'll you'll find it there. So it's it's Facebook somewhere. So. Well, it's been a joy to talk to you, Keith. Be sure to follow the Gettys on their website and social media, and visit my website nationalwife.com. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank